Welcome back everyone. This week we're talking about the secret superpowers of your loop pedal. I'm not the first person to observe that loopers are one of the most fun bits of kit out there. As many other videos will tell you, they're brilliant for practice, like playing lead over a chord progression, or for performance. You can build up arrangements from scratch right in front of an audience, and it can be great fun to watch. Just look at the likes of Katie Tunstall, Ed Sheeran, Reggie Watts, or the amazing Mark Rebier here on YouTube. In my experience, the way most people approach a loop will be to start with a central idea, then build some layers on top of it, maybe add in some percussion, and then solo or sing over that layered arrangement. And that's great fun and a good creative exercise. If you put some thought into it, you could build a whole song around that approach. But after I got my looper, it wasn't that long before I started wondering what else I could do with it other than just laying down some chords to solo over, or building an arrangement layer by layer. And so, here is my incomplete but hopefully inspiring list of weird and wonderful looper tricks. If you can think of any more, please let me know in the comments. First up, we've got ostinatos, or ostinati if you're feeling fancy. Basically, patterns that repeat over the top of the rest of an arrangement. This isn't a million miles away from that standard kind of looping approach where you build up your layers, except that instead of starting from the foundation of the riff or chord sequence and then building up, we're starting from the top layers and then filling in the harmony underneath that. A fun thing about doing it this way is that instead of being stuck structuring everything around the riff you started with and eventually getting bored of it, you can play around in the world of polymeter by having your ostinato in a different time signature from your main part. So let's say we start with this ostinato in 6. And then we can add in some chords underneath in 4-4 time. The ostinato will keep cycling round and matching up against the chords in different ways until they eventually sync back up again. Now, if that involved a bit too much counting for your taste, let's get into something a bit spacier and build some drones. If you've ever tried to loop just a single note to use as a pedal tone for your arrangement, you'll have come up against the problem where every time the loop restarts, you can hear the note restarting too. So here's how to get a smooth drone that you can easily set up in a live scenario. First, we set the looper recording for a little bit, but we don't play anything. For a simple drone, you can keep this loop pretty short, but feel free to experiment with longer loops if you want to start building some richer ambient soundscapes. Now we've established our silent starter loop, we can start overdubbing onto that and fade in a note. Because we're now in overdub mode, we no longer have to worry about the start and end of the loop, and we get a nice smooth drone. Now, for further weirdness, let's take these ambient vibes and loops that aren't synced up with the rest of the arrangement and smush those two ideas together. So the idea here is you start recording a loop, and this is going to be a fairly long one. Once it's going, get a good reverby sound on your instrument and start playing very sparingly and high in pitch. So what you end up with is a big long loop of shimmery audio garnish. Now you can start playing something else while that loops round and round. This can really work live if you're playing with others. We've used this in a song with my band Fear in, in a song that's mainly led by Rhiannon on vocals and piano. While she does the first half of the song, I'm playing all this spooky, spacey, ambient stuff through the looper. When we get to the second half of the song, I let that loop play back while I add in some guitar chords underneath it. Because this loop is long and not matched up exactly to the time of the song, it just comes across as an eerie textural element rather than as a repeating element that the audience might get bored of. A lot of loop pedals have the ability to save loops to their internal memory, with some even being connectable to a computer so you can load audio files into them. While this can be very handy in band practices for recording ideas for future reference, it also means that you can do some really cool things by preparing audio files and loading them into the pedals, so you can basically use it as a portable, reliable audio player that you can control while you play. Basically, it's another member of the band. One quick technical note, some loopers can be set to one-shot mode which means that when triggered, the audio will play just once and not loop, which can be helpful for these sorts of techniques. If your looper doesn't have a one-shot mode, you can get around this by just adding a long clip of silence on the end of the audio that you load into the pedal, so you can set the sound going, and then you've got a long gap in which you can switch the loop off again before the loop comes round. Okay, let's get into this. So, the most straightforward use of this would be to use the looper to play back a backing track. This could be a whole arrangement for you to play along with, or it could just be one part. Let's say you've got a gig, but your drummer can't make it. Fortunately, you've been working on recording an album, and they've recorded the drum parts for all your songs. You can still make that gig, just load in the mixed down drum parts as clips into your looper. Now you can set them going and your band can play along to the pre-recorded drums. One caveat here, 
if there's a big long gap in the recorded part, like if the drums don't play for the first verse or whatever, it's going to be hard for the live musicians to stay in time, so you might need to rearrange the part to give something to keep time during those gaps. And speaking of keeping in time, let's talk about click tracks. Big budget touring acts have been using click tracks through in-ear monitors to keep exactly in time and manage tempo changes for ages now, and since in-ears are getting cheaper than ever, it's now an option open to the rest of us. Let's say you're an up-and-coming metal band with a passion for precision, you could load click tracks for each song into your looper and send that to your in-ear system. Or if you have a looper with stereo outputs, you could even prepare backing tracks with the left channel with just the click track to be sent out the left output to your in-ears, and then the right channel with all of your epic orchestral strings and stuff out to the right output to go to front of house. No need to bring your laptop along to the venue and risk the punters spilling their drinks on it, just show up with your looper and your in-ears rig and you're good to go. But let's say maybe you don't want to worry about syncing up with full-length backing tracks, but it'd be nice to have a few extra sonic goodies available to spice up your live shows. You could use the looper to supply all sorts of extra sounds, such as vibey intros and outros, sub drops, samples, more samples, even more samples. Okay, you get the idea with one shots, but you can also load up the pedal with prepared loops to great effect. One I've made good use of is to use it as a drum machine. I don't mean with the built-in drum sounds which are... well, they're there. Instead, I took the stomps and claps from my recording of the coal mining song Biker Hill and loaded them into the two tracks of my looper so that I could bring that stompy energy to the stage. Check this out. More recently, I found myself in a band practice wishing I had a way to get a low bass drone under what I was playing, when I realised I could just create some synth drones and load them into my looper. If you wanted to get fancy, you could even load in an audio file with one drone note in the left channel and one in the right, and then plug both outputs of your looper into an AB box so you can switch between the two notes. Maybe even use a pitch shifter after the AB box to give you a total of four possible drone notes. You could have the left as the key note, the right as the fourth degree of the scale, and then have the pitch shifter set to a whole step up, so you can play one, two, four, and five. But I'll level with you, I don't have a pitch shifter or an AB box, so I guess that's one for a future video. Right, that's all the ideas I can think of right now. Let me know if you think of any more. If you want to catch more of this stuff, please do subscribe and hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. Catch you next time. Bye.